You must have heard about HTTP parameter pollution, and if you didn't, it's okay, we are gonna talk about it first and then we will move on to server-side parameter pollution, because they both are kinda similar. So, HTTP parameter pollution occurs when multiple instances of the same parameter are injected into an HTTP request, which causes confusion for the server. For example, I'm gonna take a look at this blog because this is a real case scenario. So it's a parameter pollution vulnerability on an invite member functionality where a user is able to send multiple emails to a single user, basically flooding or bombarding their inbox with emails since there is no rate limit. So yeah, there is another vulnerability in it. So this is a functionality where the user types in the email, what they did, they intercepted the request and they found out that in the backend there is an array that is being used and it accepts multiple values so they provided multiple emails like 100 or 200 and they send this request to the server interesting thing is that the victim did receive all those emails in their inbox so there was no validation being performed here this was happening simply because of the blind trust on client side validation by the server. It means that in the server there is a misconfiguration where the server is not checking for duplicated emails and is solely relying on client side validation. So by polluting the invite email parameter with duplicate values, they were able to flood the recipient inbox with multiple emails. Since we are talking about HTTP parameter pollution, it's important to know about parameter precedence. Now, parameter precedence in HTTP request refers to how the web server handles multiple occurrences of the same parameter in a URL query string. For example, we saw that the URL had multiple parameters with the same name. Now, how the server is going to handle it, it depends on what technology is being used in the backend. There are three types of occurrence. First occurrence, last occurrence, and all occurrence precedence. So basically, in the first occurrence, the web server considers only the first occurrence of a parameter in the URL query string. So if the same parameters appear multiple times, the server is going to ignore all the parameter except the first one. In the last occurrence, it's the opposite. Obviously, it's going to ignore all the parameters except the last parameter. And in the all occurrence, the server is basically going to consider all the occurrences of the parameter. And it collects all the values into a list or array and process it. For example, PHP uses the last occurrence, Apache Tomcat uses the first occurrence, and jQuery uses the all occurrence. So if you know what technology is being used in the backend, you might be able to know that how the server is going to handle those multiple parameters. Now we will talk about how we can test for parameter pollution. So I'm going to share you my little notes here. And it has some direct points over here to test for parameter pollution. It won't make much sense if you look at it directly, but I'm going to explain it one by one. So to test for parameter pollution, you can inject invalid parameters using a URL encoded ampersand character. What do I mean by that? So basically, when you have a request, you have multiple parameters and they are separated by ampersand. So if you want to include additional parameter, you can use ampersand, but sometimes the server won't accept that ampersand and it will remove it. So instead of putting ampersand directly, you can just URL encode it. So let me scroll down a little bit. We can see that the API endpoint is over here and there is parameter one, parameter two, and then parameter three, and there's another parameter here, test true. So instead of using ampersand, this is a URL encoded form of ampersand percent 26. So by using this URL encoded form, you can inject another parameter and the server might accept it or act in a weird way just to test for it. Another point is inject valid parameter as a second parameter in server side request. So modify the query string to include the additional valid parameter. What do I mean by that? So basically, let's say you were analyzing the application, you were looking at some different requests in your burp suite, and you found that there is some other parameter that also exists. So you can also use that 
another valid parameter in the request. For example, over here, you can see the original request has param1, value, param2, and value2, param3, and value3. So this is this part is being expected by the server but let's say you found some another parameter through analyzing js files and you found there is another parameter test with the value true so you can inject it over here and you can see how the server responds again you have to url encode those special characters always a good choice okay Another point is override existing parameter by injecting a second parameter with the same name. I'm pretty sure everyone is aware of this one because it's the most popular one. Now it depends on the backend how it's going to handle that request or which parameter the backend is going to use. Since we talked about parameter precedence, so it depends totally on the technology. Let me scroll down a bit and here is example of overriding existing parameters. Here is the param1, param2, and again param2. So it depends on the technology which param2 is going to choose, this one or this one. Okay. Now the last point is truncate the server side request with URL encoded hash character. Okay. You can also add hash character to the parameter. For example, Let's say there is param equal admin and then you can put a hash over here. Now this looks a bit weird but why we are using hash? So basically hash is a special character which is used to indicate typically fragment identifiers and anchors in URL. So it can be used to truncate the URL and we can analyze how the server responds to it. So basically adding a weird character to check how the server responds. If it still doesn't make much sense, it will when I'll start demonstrating it practically because we are going to implement what we just learned in both figure lab. To understand this, let's have a look at this example. This web application has this login functionality through which you can log in by providing a username and password. But let's say you have no idea of any username and password and you want the password of admin or somehow you want to log in in someone else's account. So how are we going to do that? So basically there is another functionality here that is forget password. But before I click into this, I'm going to capture the request in my burp suite over here. Okay, so I'm going to click on forget password and capture this request. In the HTTP history, I can see the forget password endpoint and a JS file as well. Okay, so in the forget password, we need to provide the username we want to change the password for. Let's try to type in Weiner. It says invalid username, so this username doesn't exist. Let's try administrator. Okay, it says please check your email. Means this username does exist. And over here, we can see how the backend request looks like for this reset password functionality. So I'm going to send this request to repeater. And if I send this request, in the response, we get this result as email, which is hidden and the type is email. Okay. To test for server-side parameter pollution, we have to analyze the response of the server on different kinds of requests. To do that, we can add a random parameter. Let's say a parameter we doesn't know if it exists or not. So to do that, I'm just going to add an ampersand and let's say x equals y. I don't know if it exists or not, I'm just going to send it to the server. And in the response, we are not getting anything. It says 200 OK and everything looks normal, probably because the server is truncating it before sending. Maybe there is a code that says if there is another ampersand after this username parameter, just remove it and don't respond to it, something like that. So there's nothing we can do is use the real encoded form of ampersand. 
that will be percent 26. If I go to request body parameters, in the username we can see this is percent 26 x equals y, which is basically ampersand x equals y, the decoded form here. So it's literally the same. I'm gonna send this request. And they were not expecting a URL encoded form. We got this error. Parameter is not supported. Obviously, because this parameter doesn't exist. Okay, what else we can do here? Another thing we can do is use a hash character, which is percent 23. So I'm just going to remove this part and type in 23 here and you can see it looks like this. Okay, let's send this request and this time we are getting a different error that says field not specified. Okay, so we are getting the name of the parameter that is field but we don't know exactly what's the value for it. Let's try to change this x to field. And send this request and it still says field not specified because we haven't provided an accurate value. There are two things we can do in this case. The first one is brute force this parameter value. And the other thing is analyzing code. So we noticed that there is a JavaScript code related to this forget password thing. So I'm going to just take it to the repeater and send the request. And I'm going to analyze this JavaScript file. So this is the file for forget password. And we know that this endpoint exists. So let me just copy it and put it in the search bar here. And we can see that, okay, there is forget password, error, and form, and some other things. Yeah, there's also invalid username, which we got when we were trying to put a username, but that doesn't exist. And if I scroll a little bit more down here, we can see something interesting. That is reset tokens. So we have found another parameter that also exists. Okay, the whole point of analyzing this JavaScript file was to find if there is another parameter that does exist. And we found it. That is reset token. So I'm going to go back to the first request and type here reset token. Send the request. And we are again getting this error. So let's change this to 26, which is ampersand. And I'm going to put a hash character over here. Percent 23. Okay, this is kind of like the whole payload. Let's send this request again. And we have the reset token over here this time. Okay, now we know the reset token. How are we going to use this for exploitation? From the previous request, we saw that this is the format of the request. So we can just copy this part. And I'm going to send this request to repeater again. And I'm going to paste it over here. And then I'm going to provide this reset token we got. Over here. Remove this parameters and make it a get request okay send it and we are getting a 200 response and it says new password confirm new password means this is the page for changing the password i'm gonna click on show response in the browser and paste it over here and here we have the reset password page for administrator so whatever password we are going to write here it will change for the administrator let's say it's basically one two three four five six just for the sake of testing okay now i'm gonna go back to my account and this time i'm going to type the password for administrator that I created. 
and we are logged in in admin's account and the admin doesn't even know that his password has been changed okay guys so that's it for this video i hope you learned something new thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one